Senegal is in the throes of what many are calling a constitutional coup as President Macky Sall has postponed elections. The country was set to hold elections on February 25th after years of protests against Sall, who is not eligible to run for a third term. The decision to postpone the polls was approved by Parliament, which was originally set to discuss another proposal by the opposition for a delay due to alleged irregularities in the process. But this was used by the President to postpone the polls instead and during the parliamentary vote, police entered the premises and removed opposition deputies. It's quite confusing and there's a lot of chaos and to understand the situation in the Senegal, we go to Abdul. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. Very dramatic developments in Senegal. Could you maybe first take us through what has been happening? Many people, in fact, calling it a coup by the president himself. Uh, well, Prashant, this is called constitutional coup because this is uh, something which is, you can say, at least uh, unique uh, in some ways for Senegalese politics. It has the Senegal does not have a history of the kind of things which has happened in the last few days, uh, in which uh, uh, President Macky Sall has basically got an extension until December 15. To, uh, his term was getting over it on February, uh, sorry, in April, first week. And now he will be president till December 15, as per the resolution adopted by the Senegalese Parliament um, uh, National Assembly. Uh, it basically the resolution which was proposed by the opposition uh, PDS uh, Senegalese Democratic Party, uh, which basically uh, supported by Macky Sall's party, uh, and got. Uh, but the resolution was voted in a way where the, most of the other people, most of the other members of the parliament who opposed this resolution were thrown out of the parliament, uh, were not allowed to debate on it, and and so on and so forth. And, and uh, the resolution was adopted. So the way it is adopted and the way it has happened, uh, as I say, unprecedented uh, uh, development in Senegal, that's why it is called uh, uh, the constitutional coup by the opposition members. Uh, it means that the election which was scheduled uh, later this month may not happen until December 15. And there are also apprehensions that this may even be further delayed uh, because it depends. And this also means that uh, the, 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 uh, the opposition, which basically, uh, it basically it means the opposition which has been opposing uh, Macky Sall's uh, policies and kind of uh, it was sure that he will not be contesting the election uh, this time, will basically remain in power in a way uh, as opposition is claiming unconstitutionally for uh, uh, and that basically creates a possibility of uh, kind of uh, some kind of danger to the political stability in the country and the uh, 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 the freedom of the uh, uh, people to vote and elect their representatives so that's what has happened uh, several people who were protesting the move have been arrested and uh, uh, in fact the uh, the government has ordered suspension of internet and other, uh, in fact, some of the media houses also claim that they have been uh, shut down uh, following uh, the reporting they carried out uh, from the opposition point of view. Uh, Abdul, tensions have been building up in Senegal for a while right now. We have seen you know, considerable protests by various sections and a very strong crackdown by Macky Sall's government on these protests. So could you maybe also take us through what has been the situation over the past few years? What is the kind of opposition? Why are they opposing uh, his policies? Uh, well, uh, uh, Senegal in under uh, uh, Macky Sall has basically implemented a kind of economic policies, uh, uh, which basically are very unpopular among the people. Uh, this has led to, of course, the economic uh, problems uh, in the country. And that basically has mobilized people behind a, a leader called Usman Sonko, uh, who became, emerged very popular. Uh, and there were a large number of demonstrations which were carried out, not only by uh, Sonko, but other groups which basically uh, are coalition of different civil society groups and uh, organizations which have been historically opposed to imperialist and colonialist interventions, neoliberal policies, and so on and so forth. And that coalition basically is seen as a threat to the establishment in the country. 
and and that's why you will see the the, the co coalition which has emerged during the vote in the parliament between the main opposition party and the uh, ruling party in the country uh, uh, there are also claims that the constitution institutions in the country have been demolished by Makisal's uh, uh, government, uh, including the, uh, the courts and the Constitutional Council, which basically oversees the elections in a way. And uh, this has led to attacks, assaults on all kinds of opposition candidates. In fact, one of the major reasons uh, which has been cited uh, for postponing the, uh, the election by the Makisal government itself is that uh, the constitutional council cancelled the uh, candidature of some of the prominent opposition members including usman sonko uh, which has seen as the face of the popular uh, movement but this of course is an uh, 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 the uh, there is a, a sense that this is used an ex as an excuse because uh, Sonko has basically extended support to another candidate, uh, Basirao Fay, and Fay seems to be gaining ground uh, for, uh, in the country because he was standing for the issues which were raised by the popular movement in the country, primarily the economic suffering, the colonial interventions, the destruction of the institutions in the country uh, in the last few years by uh, uh, by uh, Sal's government. So. Uh, the, this is a peculiar excuse made by uh, Sal in basically to uh, retain power and to uh, postpone. In fact, there was a speculation that Sal did not want, uh, sorry, Sal wanted to contest for the third term, uh, defying the constitutional provision in the country. And that also uh, could be one of the reasons that he now seeks uh, extension through this particular uh, move, which is widely considered as unconstitutional in the country. Right. Abdul, thank you so much for that update. We'll get back to you when there's more news. But do stay back because we are going to ask you some questions about our next story as well. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in West Asia again with a variety of aims, including trying to finalize some version of a ceasefire and purportedly restricting the escalation of Israel's war on Gaza. However, the US itself is responsible for and as a cat is a catalyst for this escalation, as is clear from its attacks on Iraq, Syria and Yemen. The US also continues to push for some kind of normalization between Arab countries and Israel. However, Saudi Arabia has made it clear that it will not consider this until an independent Palestinian state is established. Meanwhile, on Monday, the UN Security Council discussed the US attacks in the region. To get a sense of what's happening, we go back to Abdul. Welcome back, Abdul. A very heated debate in the UN Security Council on the situation uh, in the wider West Asia region. Could you take us to some of the major arguments that have come up after the US launched these strikes over the past weeks targeting Yemen, Iraq and Syria? Well, uh, the, the meeting, Security Council meeting, emergency meeting was called by Russia. Uh, and of course, uh, basically saying that what happened on February 2 uh, uh, in Iraq and Syria basically constitutes a threat to regional and global security. Uh, and and Syri the representatives which spoke uh, includes uh, both Syrians and uh, Iraqi uh, ambassadors along with Iranian ambassador. And all of these three countries basically raised similar issues which basically uh, rejected uh, US claims that uh, what happened on February 2 was a retaliatory attack, yes, attacks in self-defense because U.S. forces has have been attacked in the region uh, of, uh, and uh, three soldiers uh, died in Jordan. Uh, these countries, the representatives claimed that this is not the root cause for the attack. It basically happened because uh, one, of course, what is happening in uh, Gaza, Israel uh, and Palestine in general, U.S. support to the occup Israeli occupation is the primary reason for the resentment against the U.S. forces uh, across the region, one. And the second thing is uh, the U.S. Force, presence of U.S. forces in the region itself is illegal and uh, constitutes an occupation. So until the occupation ends, both the Israeli occupation in Palestine and uh, the U.S. forces with withdrawal from the region, those attacks will not end. And uh, uh, and that that the similar arguments made by all three countries. Russia, in fact, said that the U.S. attacks are unprecedented in the sense that this is the largest attack since 
had Iraq invasion in 2003, which US has carried out in the region. And this basically is an attempt to be, drag Iran into the larger regional conflict and, and uh, basically escalate the tension at the regional level, which basically completely is uh, uh, against the US stated policy of not trying to control the conflict and not letting it uh, uh, grow at the regional level. Similar uh, 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 similar arguments were made by Chinese representative as well. And, and most of the other country, ex except for the UK, uh, uh, which basically uh, bought the US argument that this basically constitute a retaliatory action and so on and so forth. Rest of the countries, most of the rest of the countries opposed US attacks and basically demanded a much more proactive uh, action, uh, proactive steps from the UN Security Council. Of course, this uh, constitutes a much more uh, of a kind of uh, 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 kind of uh, intention rather than its action, because of course we know Security Council will not be able to act this without uh, US being uh, party to that action, and that US will not uh, uh, do such thing harming its own interest uh, in the region. Hey, Abdul, also, where does, where do you, how do you see things heading in the next, uh, you know, few weeks? We know, of course, that there have been attacks by resistance forces in all these countries against bases. U.S. continuously uh, retaliating. Uh, the situation in Yemen is there as well. And Blinken now visiting the region. So, where do we, uh, you know, how do things seem poised at this point? Well, um, as you rightly pointed out, Winkle, Blinken is in, uh, in the region again. This is the fifth visit. He is making in the region now, right now. He is in Israel, and um, it seems that uh, uh, his visit again has failed to achieve whatever goals he had stated. Uh, 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 basically, whatever where, where the goals uh, may uh, uh, pointed out earlier. For example, uh, he visited Saudi Arabia, uh, saying that reiterating the U.S. claims that it U.S. wants normalization of relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia. In fact, if you see media coverage, most of the Western media seems to kind of hint that Saudi Arabia is ready to normalize relationship with Israel at any moment. But if you see the statement made by officially made by the Saudis today, sorry, on uh, uh, on uh, Wednesday. It basically rejects such uh, uh, claims and says that there will be no normalization of relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel until there is a, a, a Palestinian state and a peace in the region, peace in Palestine. So uh, it seems that U.S. is basically what ha Blinken's uh, visit, as well as the attacks which are carried out in Iraq and Syria and Yemen, basically shows a very confused uh, 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 U.S. stance, at least uh, on the uh, regional uh, situation at this moment. They do want to kind of uh, create some kind of situation where Saudi Arabia and Israel come together and there is a larger acceptance of Israel in the region. But at the same time, they are not able to convince even the Israelis not to do any such uh, uh, provocation. For example, uh, there was an attack on Syria. Uh, the day Blinken visited Israel. Uh, and, and that, again, I said before, goes against the goals uh, of uh, Blinken. Uh, one of the goals, as I said before, is the re uh, attempts to restrain the conflict from uh, spreading in the region. So, and uh, uh, as far as the Iraq and Syria is concerned, the resistance in Iraq and Syria is concerned, of course, uh, both uh, the PMF, uh, uh, Popular Mobilization Forces, and what we generally call Islamic Resistance Forces, uh, uh, have uh, reiterated their claims, and Houthis, of course, that they will not stop attacking U.S. Uh, forces or the target Israeli targets until there is a ceasefire in, Isra in, in Gaza, and there is uh, uh, attempts to make a larger peace in the region means the two-state solution. And uh, so uh, it seems that U.S. is not getting this primary message. And that basically is a uh, fact that even the, uh, the, uh, the ceasefire agreement, which, was pro which is right now is being discussed in Qatar, uh, is also not getting uh, traction uh, 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 for, for the reason that there is no concrete uh, steps taken by the U.S. to kind of create that confidence where 
uh, it seems that the uh, the basic concerns raised by the uh, players in the region and the countries are even uh, attempted to address. To be right. Thank you so much, Abdul, for those updates. That's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.